Hey there, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Talking to Myself, the part of the day where I talk to myself about things that I was thinking about the night before while laying in bed. Shout out, of course, to all 3,900 or so of you who are subscribed to me at the time of me making this video. I truly do appreciate it. As well as shout out to Carhu, the unofficial official street photography footwear brand of street photographers. And speaking of Carhu, they're teaming up with Fleet Feet, Coffee and Bikes, and Coffee with Keith from Houston, Texas, in order to help out the kids in the Houston's Third Ward area and Houston Independent School District by hooking them up with some back to school goodies. So what these groups are doing is they are making sure that these kids not only have backpacks and school supplies, but actually shoes on their feet for the new school year to start them off with a bang and so they can carry that momentum completely throughout the end of the school year. So I wanted to be able to give you guys an opportunity to help out with this and let me tell you how. If you live in the Houston, Texas area, you can go ahead and get yourself a backpack from a Target or something, fill it up with school supplies and you can drop it off at Dashi House or at the Tipping Point until August 12th, that's Dashi House or the tipping point. Any school supplies, any backpacks, you can go ahead and take that over there and donate it so that they can give it away to one of the kids in Houston's third ward area or with Houston Independent School District. But if you're someone who doesn't live in the Houston area, like myself, I don't live in the Houston area, and you would still like to help, there's gonna be a link down below where you can go ahead and you can go there. Uh, it's gonna have all the information that you need. And for every $30 that's donated, they are donating a pair of shoes to some children, which is a big deal. Again, fresh kicks at the beginning of the year. It's gonna be fantastic. You guys know Carhu looks fantastic on feet. So I just wanna give you guys the opportunity to help out in this way. $30 gets a kid a pair of sneakers. So whether you're living in Houston or not, you're able to help out. We wanna make sure they go over and above um, what they're um, trying to reach for with their goal. We wanna exceed that because we wanna give more than enough for each and every single kid there. So again, if that's something that you'd be interested in, I highly encourage it. Hope you guys are able to be a part of this. So today I wanna to talk about the fallacy of upgrading your camera gear. Now I know whether you're on YouTube, Instagram, um, watching TV, you're getting hit from every single which way with ads from every single camera company about their new camera. Most notably what sparked this idea was the fact that Canon is pushing out their R10 and their R7 full force with so many ads, it's spent a lot of money on advertisement. And I'm sure they're fantastic cameras and I'm sure they're great cameras, but to a lot of people, they're going to assume that that is the upgrade they need to make their photography better. Well, unfortunately, breaking news is that that will not make your photography better. See, the issue is a lot of people think if I upgrade my camera, I'm going to be able to be more skillful and get better images. When the fact is the people that you're looking at that take the fantastic images that you want to one-to-one -one replicate, that you want to make something just like, they're not taking these images because of the camera they have. They're taking these images because they're a skillful photographer. You see, a lot of times we think by buying something brand new, no matter what, it's gonna be better for us. So we take the hype, we take the, oh, this has 15 frame per second JPEG bursts and the autofocus is almost as good as the R3, the same algorithm, and we don't know anything else about what goes into the camera, so we walk in there blindly. I've seen people that were with Fujifilm um, trading in their X-T3 or selling their X-T3 to purchase an XS10 or purchase an XC4 because it has better autofocusing and in the case of the XS10, it has IBIS. Now, you're trading a flagship that has weather sealing, dual card slots, 10-bit codec, um, all these amazing things, um, 11 frame per second, um, high-speed burst, and you're trading it or selling it or whatever for something that is missing almost every spec except for autofocus. And that's the thing I wanna talk about. When we're, when we're talking about upgrades, are you really talking about upgrading your camera gear and making yourself better? Or are you just talking about, hey, this camera company said the autofocus is better? Now, there is a big difference between stack sensors and non-stack sensors, BSI and non-BSI. We'll get into that in another video. Basically, if it's a stack sensor, that's an upgrade. But that's the difference between getting a Canon EOS R3 or just being with a Canon EOS R6. And when you're looking at, uh, you know, are you able to get the job done? Is there really that big of a difference whenever it comes to these situations? I would say not. You see, for a lot of people, an R6, an R3, an R5, an X-H2S from Fujifilm, even an X-T4 um, from Sony, an A9, an A92, an A7R camera, they're all out of reach financially. 
But what they do is they save and they save and they save. And then the first time that these companies release something that is lower tier entry level, but they say, oh, it's got nice autofocus, got nice this and that. It's got a, uh, more megapixels. They jump on it because they assume, okay, newer must be better, even if it's entry level. And I've got, I've got something just to tell you guys. It's not. It will never be because the things that you're craving, the things that you want in those flagship cameras will never be put in entry level cameras from build quality, from the accessories that go with it, from the capabilities of it. Listen, I have right here a Canon 1DX Mark I. This is about a 12 year old camera, kind of beat up, everything like that. You know, it's, it's seen some better days. You want to know what's amazing about this camera is that this camera shoots 12 frames per second continuous with no blackout. That's a beautiful sound. But do you wanna know what's even crazier about this camera? There are not more than maybe a couple handful of cameras in the world in the past 12 years, 20 years, that shoot as fast as this camera and as reliable. The read write speed, the shutter speed, um, the actual shutter, the, the ability to perform in low light, not a lot of cameras match this. I, I was shooting recently with this Fujifilm X-T4. Fantastic camera. Even this to some people is outdated. But at 15 frames per second, not as reliable. 11 frames per second it was. So I had to choose between shooting 15 frames per second and having my camera lock up on me like it did a couple times. This is a second copy from Fujifilm that locked up at 15 frames, or go down to 11. Well now right here for $600 with this 1DS, 1DX Mark I, I'm able to get this. That's a pretty good trade-off. What I'm trying to get to is this. This camera right here is an older flagship, but if you're shooting sports, if you want high frame continuous, raw plus JPEG writing, if you want great looking images, this is a better camera to get than the Canon R7 or the Canon R10. It's cheaper, it's better built, it's weather sealed, the lenses are more affordable, and it takes the exact same photos. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, well, this is only 18 megapixels. Last time I checked, I could still print a 20 by 30 at 272 DPI with this, ca with this camera, 18 megapixels. And if you're thinking, well, that's not that great, you know, what, what if you have to crop? How many of you actually print a 20 by 30 image? Because I have, and they look fantastic, no matter what I'm using, no matter if I use an X-T2, an X-H1, or this, the images are gonna come out great. And do you wanna know why, no matter what camera I'm using, they're gonna come out great? is because of me, the photographer. Because at the end of the day, you wanna know what matters more than what gear that you have? It's photographers and their skill. Yeah, gear matters. It matters a whole damn lot. Listen, I can't shoot this Leica Type 262 12 frames per second. If I was trying to do some coverage with this, it wouldn't go that well. But there are things I can do. This weekend I had the opportunity over the weekend to cover Fernando Tatis Jr. and his rehab assignment. He's the superstar shortstop for the San Diego Padres. Fantastic time, it was great. I did the whole thing with an X-Pro3 and then an X-T4 and this Leica right here. Three cameras that people would tell you aren't sports photography cameras. Three cameras that people would tell you because the sensor aren't great cameras. But you wanna know what's fantastic about that, no matter what, is that I was still able to make it happen. I think the images turned out great. You can tell me the same and tell me what you think. But for someone who can't afford this Leica right here, they may be turned off. For someone who can't afford this X-T4, they may be turned off. So they might go and run out and they're gonna buy something brand new, but an entry level. Maybe an X-C4 or an X-S10, because it's close enough. Why go for an X-C4 when the X-T3 almost has the exact same capabilities? The X-H1, almost the exact same capabilities. Why would I spend the money on the R6, on the R3? Again, this is if you don't have the money, you're having to finance this stuff. Why, and if I can't afford those, settle for an R7 or an R10, when if I want to shoot sports, this is all I need. This is the thing we have to think about. Just because something isn't brand new doesn't mean it's fantastic. When you buy older flagships, you get older flagship qualities every single time. This Type 262 for a lot of people may be old, but it's got a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, the exact kind of CMOS sensor that is in the Leica M10. Now, it may not be an M11, it may not have 61 megapixels or whatever, but if for people that are looking for an M10, this is gonna do the exact same thing, the exact same focusing system, the exact same type of resolution. What exactly are you looking for? 
The same thing with this. People look at the X-T4, now this is old because the X-H2S came out. Or, you know, they look at this and they're waiting for the X-H2 or they're waiting for the X-Pro4. Or they want this and they're overlooking it. The fact that the X-T2, an X-H1, and X-T3 all have comparable focusing systems, all have weather sealing, all have two card slots, and all can get the job done. Again, it's the same thing. People will look at this camera and they will say, oh, that's old, it can't get the job done. Why is it that photographers, when this was the industry standard and they were kicking Nikon's ass with his 18 megapixels and with all their focusing points, why is it that photographers were able to get the job done then? Why is it that when the X-T4 was the hot stills camera or was the hot video camera, people were able to get the job done? Why is it that when the Type 262 was brand new, it was the best like you could get and people could get the job done? Why is it that whenever something brand new comes out, entry level or flagship, we automatically think the thing below them sucks? There are so many people that would rather get an XC4 or an XS10 for the same price they could get an X-T3 and probably a grip or an X-H1 for sure and a grip, why would they rather go that route instead of the flagship route? And again, it's because of the marketing and it's because this fallacy of what an upgrade is. Listen, I'm telling you right now, buying a new entry level camera will never be an upgrade or a better upgrade than buying an older generation or two generation old flagship camera. Period. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think. I don't care about autofocus. I don't care about the video features. The fact is this. If you start looking at camera systems and you start looking at the specs for what was being done and what was being created and you start looking at yourself what you need to do, I'm telling you, you're going to find a lot of great, fantastic cameras that are flagship cameras that you don't have to break the bank for. And that's the issue is right now people are breaking the bank for cameras that can't even do half the things that a camera like this can. I get it, the R7, the R10, it's got a, it's got a brand new um, uh, mount, it's got brand new glass, it's got, you know, it's their first APS-C lenses, et cetera, et cetera, their first APS-C mount. But is it gonna hold the candle to this? Still no. So my plea to you is next time you're looking to upgrade your camera, downgrade your camera system. Don't worry about the newest new and what's coming out on entry level if you can't afford the flagship. Look at those X-T3s. Look at those 1DXs, those 5D Mark III or 5D Mark IVs. Um, go ahead and look at those Nikon D3s. Look at every single old flagship before you make a purchase on a new camera. Because a lot of times, you guys, the autofocus improvement is negligible. And even worse, that comes with a price tag and you want to miss out on wasting money on camera gear whenever you can get something cheaper that does the exact same job and gives you a similar result. With all that being said, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Remember to take it light, but take it and have a good one. God, I love that. Oh, man, that gets my shorts going. That gets my shorts going right there. Oh, that sensor's so nice. Ooh.